Hello and welcome back to our 1978 Toyota Corolla modernization project, a project we're calling Kai Rolla. If you've been following this series, you know my good friend Kai bought a non-running 1978 Toyota Corolla. That one. We then got the engine running, installed some performance parts, I was right on just like a Toyota part should. Did a little custom fabrication. Kind of like a fidget spinner, I guess. Yeah! And ultimately got the little car running on the Holly Sniper 2300 electronic fuel injection system. Excellent! In this episode, we're gonna install our electric cooling fan, tie up some wiring loose ends, and finally fix that pesky transmission leak. So let's get started. All right, so we just wanna show you what we've been up to these last couple weeks. Uh, we've been working on the Cairola in fits and starts and uh, not really enough work getting done in a day to make a video on it. Uh, but we have made some progress. So, starting off, uh, we ordered an adapter for the Holly Sniper coolant temp sensor. That's an extra one we got. Beautiful little piece of stainless. And what that did was, it was a step up from the uh, stock coolant temp sensor size to the Holly size. Um, so that is a great little solution for that. We're still trying to source a plug here for this. Um, coolant passage that used to go to the intake manifold. Uh, we'll find something for that. Uh, also, if you remember, way back when the alternator wasn't charging, and uh, the alternator still not charging. Uh, while the car was running, we discovered that the alternator was not charging the battery, so we're gonna have that rebuilt. Um, we had the alternator rebuilt by a local shop. Um, they put new brushes in it, new bearings, it's rebuilt. And we got a new voltage regulator for it, just to be safe. Now, if you also remember, we had some wiring atrocities in here. Um, this harness was totally burnt up. And Kai actually disassembled the harness found all the burned wires and he replaced them. So now these are fresh and nice and good to go. Uh, we have a lot of these uh, loose ends here that used to go to emissions equipment that are no longer on the vehicle. So we'll terminate those when we get the chance. Uh, so today we're hoping to mount our electric cooling fan. Um, we uh, took off the old viscous clutch cooling fan that was mounted here in front of the water pump. Uh, we took that off because it takes up a lot of space and it robs horsepower, yada yada. And we wanted to go with electric cooling fan because the Holly Sniper can run that automatically. Uh, so we got some new butt nuts and bolts to install the pulley back onto the water pump. And butts. And butts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, let's get started. Alright, so here's our water pump pulley. The, uh, the old bolts were way too long. Uh, so if we were going to bolt this back in with the stock fan clutch bolts, they would have protruded so far from the back they would have made contact. So we got these shorter ones with some nice lock washers. Perfect light. Hollywood, it's kind of a head. All right, so the water pump pulley is installed. It looks good to go. Nice. Work on the bell tension. 
Yeah, we're tensioning the alternator. So that the alternator is what actually holds tension on your V belt here. This car's too low, Kai. How low is low? You need a lift kit or something. Uh, Make it a little easier to work on. Let's cut the coils. <laughs> the good thing about a V belt is because of the shape of the belt, as it's being pulled, it actually pulls itself tighter into the pose. So it doesn't have to be super tight like a serpentine belt, but you do need a good bit of tension on it. So next we have our 516 bolts. Finally found some longer bolts uh, to bolt the throttle body to our intake. So watch out for that. Yeah, these, these barely had any threads hanging anything on. So, uh, our new bolt is going to be quite an improvement. Supplied mounting system for this flex light radiator. Uh, they're basically a little nylon piece that pushes through the back side of the fan and then you push it through the radiator and you fasten it with one of these little plastic nuts. Uh, I was pretty skeptical of these at first uh, but I ran it on my car and uh, they're doing great so why not do it on cars?
All right, so our next step is going to be to lay out the wiring harness for the EFI system and for our cooling fan relays. Okay, so we got this little relay wire harness from JEGS. Uh, it came complete with a five pin relay and a little wiring diagram and uh, pretty much everything you need to do to wire up this cooling fan to a system. Now they want you to wire it up to your ignition switch, but the sniper has a output control for cooling fans. So you can set a predetermined temperature for the cooling fan to turn on and a predetermined temperature for the cooling fan to turn off. And it does this with a ground switch. So instead of switching the, putting the switch on the power side, we're gonna put the switch on the ground side and wire this directly to the battery. And so the yellow and the red both go to the battery positive. Yeah, exactly. oh, Okay. So, and since this is Kai's specialty... So, signal at 20 Hz equal the signal at 20 kilohertz. The, the converter we designed, for example, want to make sure you have flat frequency response. Any digital distortion, because it's just chop off, have a really, really sharp edge. That's what the sharp in the frequency edge. domain all the way they are out, harmonic. right? The FFT doesn't kilowatts. look like if this. If you look at frequency the FFT, FFT and like any modern the they have has a natural a roll off. Reason that there's 500 different dirt boxes in the market. <laughs> Why you buy the rats versus the big muff or versus the. And ultimately, Kai's car, he needs to determine how he wants his wire harness laid all around this engine. Uh, I'm going to enjoy a refreshment and uh, Kai can uh, enjoy the work. Thank you, Garrett. <laughs> Put this to here, this thing sideways, so it gives us some slack. Let's uh, wash your fluid. Hmm. Or you can disconnect it. Like the same mistake. <laughs> Self-tapping oh. to uh, clean any paint out of the hole you learn when they install it at the assembly line. Something new every day. That's uh, Mr. Toyota. He didn't want anyone screwing his cars up at the assembly line. So. I don't know if you want, you might actually want to bring that back around the back side. You know what? That's the O2 sensor. Ah. Ah. Clip right in. <laughs> Holy cow! Plug. Look at that thing! What the heck? That was meant for that! Like oh my god! So, I wonder if this thing is gonna... Does this thing handhold can enter there? Uh -huh. Coolant sensor here, O2 sensor here, 10 pin outward harness. That's that one right there with the... It's this one. We got... Okay. Here, maybe we use this one or put it here. No, this one is gonna, yeah, why not? Th those are already tapped holes. We, we can plug, plug them in from the bottom. Side. Is it gonna close? <laughs> no, we'll put them underneath down here. Oh, yeah, here, let me let me see. That looks like That's six by one instead of being all of them. Such a lonely existence, I kill myself. That's there how you, you do it. There you go. Right. And we'll probably, I'll probably screw something into here as a wire holder. Ooh. Love the story. We usually don't like tri state stuff. Which means, you know, in the middle, there's something floating. Ah, how about that? Ah, wow, that's pretty good. Oh no, that's rock. Oh yeah. That's really nice. So black wire is too brown. So yeah, no, black wire, wire is hot. hot. Yeah, so we almost wired that backwards. Yep. Alright. So another speed bump on the road of custom cars. 
Uh, this is the engine coolant temperature sensor wire for the Holley Sniper EFI and it is just too short to reach our coolant temp sensor. So Kai is going to splice in some extra wire so it has plenty of room. He's over here making his own harness. Oh, you're shooting this? <laughs> I just forgot whether this is the one part I want or... I think it could just lay just like this. We'll get it out of the way. Oh, here. Just like that. Look at the rail here. Mm -hmm. And then we splice this part in here. So... Yeah, okay, this one. Yeah. That was the second Spinal Tap album name. That's a pretty nice piece, Kai. Thank you, Garrett. <laughs> you know? Yeah. This nice. much extension, shrink wrapped, insulated. Hopefully the polarity is the wires are right. <laughs> um, it's a resistor, it I doesn't think matter. As part as a color coding scheme, it worked out well for me. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna try to, you know, along with all this wire, we probably get some clip to hold get them. Maybe I'll machine something. Go yeah. under under the throttle cable. There under the go. throttle cable yeah. before Oh, oh no. <laughs> under the throttle cable. Yeah? Yeah. Looking good so far. Like so? Uh-huh. Come on, clip, clip, clip here. Uh-huh. Going over here. And then. And that is the PR P O R, aka Planner Record. Oh yeah, that's going to be beautiful. And we deserve to change our plan of record. Yeah, and we'll just secure this down here like that. Bob's your uncle. Nice. Bob's your uncle. Nice part, Kai. I did something. <laughs> well, Kai is buttoning up the wiring of the electric cooling fan, which looks so dang nice in there. And all the different relays we need to be going. Uh, I'm going to go underneath the car and tackle that transmission leak. Uh, I remember we found out this thing was leaking like a sieve when we first rolled it in my driveway and uh, it's been it's been marking its territory pretty well <laughs> we uh, put this pan under it to try and help uh, let me show you exactly what it looks like under there all right so you can see there's quite a bit of transmission fluid collecting on the bottom of the pan it looks like the pan gasket is the main source of the leak, but also there's this little tiny seal on the side. I'll try and show you right up here. That's also leaking pretty bad, which also means that we're probably gonna have to pull the header out again. So, cut to montage. He stays quiet when they So, this looks like the seal that is causing the most trouble. You can see it's ruined 
you know, I don't know what the heck happened, but it was halfway out of the transmission. This, coupled with the leaking transmission pan gasket, is what's been making this thing leak like a sieve. So Kai went ahead and ordered this fantastic transmission overhaul kit. Uh, it should have everything that we need. I think one of those is probably going to be it. And it looks like your OD is like 22 millimeters. So let's find one of these that has a 22 millimeter OD. Looks like this one right here. That looks like the ticket, I think. See, it has a conical lip on it, just like the other one. Hold on. Ah, uh, the inner diameter looks wrong, though. Let's see if that's 22 millimeters. Yeah, 22 OD. ID is much thinner. Only like 10 millimeters ID. And this looks like, well, yeah, maybe that's it. Mm hmm. Maybe it's just one hour so yeah. bad. 11 ID. Let's just check this other one. Mm hmm. Make sure this one isn't it. You all your little check ball, check balls, and all this stuff to activate the valve body. That's stuff I don't really want to get into in my driveway. <laughs> it's the oh, here's here's a 10 millimeter and 22. Okay, so these look identical. So let's replace it. So because I don't have the Toyota specialty tool to drive this little seal into the transmission, I like to use an appropriately sized socket. And so you can see the socket's a little bit smaller OD than the seal itself, so I can just nail it in. And because the socket's hollow in the center, it'll clear into that shaft. Watch your eyes. Looks like a clean <laughs> Come on, Kai. Mm -hmm. You're reducing my uh, you usable gotta... footage here. <laughs> and we'll just insert it in the bung. Tap it in like this. <laughs> Poor man seal driver right here. Oh yeah, beauty. So what is stopping that seal from popping out? Just pure friction? Just the fear of God. What's that for? I believe that's the other side of the shift shaft. This is called the uh, detent, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you shift to gears, this is gonna slide this is going to rotate on that shaft, mm -hmm. and this detent spring is what gives you that feeling like Why would you gears. have an exposed shaft and then you use a sealer to do that? I don't know man, I'm not Toyota. Interesting. This just sound like to me it's a uh, point of failure. Well, I mean you work with engineers more than I do. In fact, there might be some engineers watching this video. Mm -hmm. If you guys know why they do it, please leave a comment below. <laughs> Beautiful. Here's that. This thing smells very good too. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that smell of brake clean. Yeah, it makes you feel a little better about your day, doesn't it? Quite nice. Well, not just my day, it makes me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be interested in the timeshare opportunity? This is T40. Well, actually A40. I think T40 is the manual transmission. Oh yeah, that is the shift shaft. So here's where your shifter connects on this side, right here, and the shaft goes all the way through. And try the court one too. If, uh... Yeah, this one doesn't look like it's gonna work. Really? Oh, wait, hold on. Uh. <laughs> oh, the music. Yeah, this will be in the montage. Oh, okay. The subject actually are not aware that they are being good. I'm excited for this thing not to be leaking on my driveway right? anymore. 
Yeah, Sunday in the first week. I know, but... <laughs> the thing is, we wanted to make sure that the project was going to succeed before we invested any time. You know what I mean? Like, first we needed to make sure the engine ran. Then we needed to make sure the EFI was going to work. Yeah, right? Net, 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 net is still you don't have a leaky driver. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> Let's say this car doesn't have an engine in it. I would still paint the first switch to face the leak. <laughs> so it doesn't stain up my new home driveway. <laughs> and piss off my girlfriend. Piss off my fio now fiance. <laughs> 110 protective uh, pen on my R32. This, uh, no, no, the R the pen on your R32 is not too bad. Oh, okay. It's it's ridiculous that you have to do it. Well, at the end of the day, we made some pretty good progress on the old Kai Rolla. And I'm happy to report that it's been a little over a week and both the transmission pan and my driveway are totally dry. In the next video, we're gonna install the electric fuel pump, fabricate some fuel lines, and take this thing down the road. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you wanna be notified when we release Kai Rolla updates, Hit that notification bell.